name is Mick and I'm a taxi driver. That's right. Come closer and cuddle me tight. No. Um, this is the first time in your cab, so what I'm doing is I'm just analysing cabs around here. Yeah. And uh, I'm just seeing which ones are best for future, you know, purchases. I just wondered if you could do this one for free for me. Uh, not on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. I've been taxi driving just over nine years now. Flexibility is a big one. Um, you know, you can wait your hours. If you want a day off, you can take a day off. You know, if you need to go somewhere, you can just go, you know. Um, and also, if one week you need a bit of extra money, you just put a few extra hours in. On a normal job, you mean you can't go to your boss and say, I'm a bit short this week, have you got any overtime, you know, which a lot of jobs you can't do. But in taxi driving, you just put them extra few hours in a week if you need to. But I think they, I think shops like that are all right to open because the foreigners and they're not religious. Nah, I don't think that's. Well, no, it's uh, it's it comes under law, not religion. Because yeah. they open at any time, don't they? So they open every hour. One or two memorable experiences. Yes. So, um, probably one. Uh, where I was actually propositioned one night by one woman who asked me to take her home. Um, and I said, well, I am taking you home, that's my job. And she said, no, you know what I mean, do you? I said, no, I don't know what you mean. And she says, well, don't you ever pick ladies up on the night time and take them home? I says, I do it all the time. I says, that's my job. Um, I knew exactly what she was after, but I was playing a bit dumb. Mate, I will get you shitloads of free drinks. Get, us, get us some free drinks and flag right, someone. Do you mind? Do you mind? We're literally going. This is my mate. She's single. Oh yeah, just do that. As long as, as long as right. no one actually like follows me or tries to touch my bummer out. But like, you can try and always like. To be fair, you know I'm all like? right. I'm all right as long as you take me in KFC and like try and persuade someone into buying me a boneless banquet. Because obviously <laughs> that that'd just be the icing on the cake. That. It's about three o'clock in the morning, and this guy just appeared out of an alleyway, dressed in a pink tutu and just stood in the middle of the road, did a little dance and then run back down the alleyway. It's, it just come out of nowhere. Is it? Like pink two, run out the alleyway, middle of the road, like that. Straight back down the alleyway again. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Hello. Hiya. They will be here in a moment. Okay. They've moaned for hours about the taxi being late and now they're not fucking ready. No, it usually happens. You've got to have a B tech and an NVQ. And just, yeah, I'll tell you, it's definitely. There you go. Four pound, please. Yes, thank you. You have to, I mean, I don't know if you use this or not. Because we've got all this. Yeah, level two B Tech Award, transporting passengers. Uh, so, yeah, you have to do a level B Tech. When you pass your B Tech, then the council will give you a license. And then when you've been working for a while, then you have to go on to do an NBQ in passenger transportation. Rachel. Rachel, yes. I got a big taxi. You are. Aren't I lucky? <laughs> um, we're going to 67 Reynolds Street. 67 Reynolds Street. Yeah, one at the um, cul-de-sac end, please, darling. Okay. So, yeah, you have to be qualified now to be a taxi driver. No swearing, lads. Answer the questions that I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> First one for 100 quid. Come on, Emmett. Cast cab. <laughs> yeah. How far have we got to go before we. Yeah, you're yeah, out here now. <laughs> well, that's it. You have no chance. Yeah. 
for me. It's like, you know, we have to have the CRB checks or the DBS checks now. We have to have all that done. You know, because at the end of the day, the public want to feel safe. We have to go home today, barring all work. Yeah? Yeah. Do you get paid more on a bank holiday? Well, we don't, no. no. No, we don't charge anymore, we just charge normal rates. Do you? Yeah. Just charge more on bank holidays. We used to. I don't I can't remember that. It used to be a quid, didn't it? And then it went to two quid, that one. Yeah. It was on two quid. Well, I mean, today's not classed as bank holiday anyway, so. No, not today. No. Tomorrow, no, Monday, isn't it? Friday and Monday. You're there and you pick somebody up and straight away you get a, a vibe. You think, you know, he's, he's dodgy and that. So you, you're on edge. You know, you really have your wits about you, you know. Um, and there are one or two. So you, you can take precautions and that if you think they're a bit dodgy, you know. Mm. Keep your eye on them and stuff. I mean, it's like if they get in the car, the, the common thing is, oh, all oh, right, I've been busy. Been busy, mate. You know, the old Peter K. And uh, I usually say, oh, I've only just started. Because if they think you've been working a while, yeah, you've got a bit of money on you. So if I think they're a bit dodgy and that, I've only just started. Somebody just put on a bit about that picture of me. Uh, how old is that lass? What's oh, the name? Nice. Tell it, me. So you, you can't can't let it worry you. And one of our drivers a few years ago, he, he ended up in hospital for about four weeks. He got a real bad kick in, you know. But he's out again and he's driving. And then one, one of my mates, he got stopped with a screwdriver. And the guy stole his car. And the police found the car. Then they found the guy with the keys to the car in his pocket. But because my mate couldn't identify him on an ID parade, he got away with it. Even though he had the keys on him. Because he had no half hand keys. He, he picked a guy up, um, and the guy got in the back. And he, he was looking, because he's got a, a display there. Because not all drivers have got a display, they've just got the camera. But he was looking at it, and this guy was like this. And he was sort of moving around to try and hide himself from the camera. Uh, and then he said he got about 100 yards down the road. And he said to him, he says, oh no, let me out. So obviously, because yeah. the cameras was there, he was obviously going to try something. But the cameras had put him off. A lot of it doesn't get reported. Or if you do, the police are just too busy to attend. They won't come. So, well, the, the only deterrent, and it is a deterrent, it does seem to work, is the CCTV in the car. But at the moment, it's too expensive to have a decent CCTV. In my opinion, the council could work with the drivers and you know perhaps subsidise it. So if the CCTV system was going to cost six hundred quid, would the council pay half and the driver pay half, and then all taxis could have CCTV, and that would put a stop to it, or you know dramatically reduce it. But people forget you're there. You're driving along and they're there and they're getting to these conversations. And they, they just forget that there's a driver at the front, you know. Some stuff, it'll make you cringe if you read what they said. I mean, there's the side, you know, there's been people in the back of the taxi. And there was one guy, and one one guy was said to the woman, oh, yeah, so she you. And she must have done, you know. And that, and that. you listen to them. Yeah. And the stuff that's on, I mean, they're arguing, you get couples arguing. And it's like, what do you think? I said, well, I don't do domestics. You know, I don't get involved with you and get on with it. You get some weird, weird and wonderful people, you do. <laughs> <laughs>